So let's take a look at that in our library. Good opportunity to push down into the library. So we took that from the internet, we put it into our design, and at the same time, we built it into our central library. So I'm gonna edit part, which is gonna open up the separate library application. Remember I said there's three applications, library, schematic, and PCB. Okay, so we're in this part. I'll just, before we start looking at this part, I'll just go into the library main. So, home page, start page is very similar. Um, you can log your support calls, etc., etc. Uh, so, the main library, we've got parts, footprints, and symbols. From here, you can access the pads and pad stacks uh, layer, the technology editor, and the rules, which originate from your library in the first instance. This is the part we're editing. So here you can see the pin mapping. We get a preview of the footprint, preview of the symbol. Um, if I click on the properties, we've got a couple of new features here. We've got the ability to be able to specify a standoff now in ECAD Star. So if you have to piggyback devices uh, that live in the, on the same location, then you no longer have to do battle with DRC, uh, as long as you configure all those correctly. Here we've got system part attributes, and then we've got user part attributes. And you'll see um, we've got the links to the data sheets, etc., from this part as we've downloaded it from Smaxis. They load all this information for you. I should have pointed out Smaxis is a free service. You just have to register. Um, those guys get paid on purchase referrals. So, um, you know, use them, let them create your devices for you. Uh, I would say it's, it's maybe not that beneficial to use it for popcorn parts or you know non non polarized discrete components because they're really easy to create anyway. Um, once you've downloaded them, they're in your library. You own them. Um, you can change them, make them company compliant, 